So we meet on the show today is Wakri Martin. He is popular in the world in the 90s. He is the founder of the Home to City Digital, which is a full service digital marketing agency. He is also the owner of Home to Smart, by what you can see in the series. One more thing, he is also the author of the book Intel Like a Boss, and today he is going to be sharing the results of the team. So we have um, Wakwe Martin Mundus here and he's going to introduce himself. My name is Martin Wakwe, but I'm popularly known as, as Mundus. I'm the co-founder of Mundus Digital. Mundus Digital is a digital advertising, it's a full service digital advertising agency that my team and I started in, in October last year. I'm also um, the founder of Mundus Farms. Mundus Farms is, is an agri business that also started last year, so good to be here. Wow, that's, 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 a, that's a great portfolio for someone as young as me. Okay, so can you tell us briefly about Mundus Digital, like what you do in that space? Okay, so as I said earlier on, it's a full service um, digital advertising agency. So basically we do content development, we do web designs and development, uh, we do branding, uh, we do SEO, that's a search engine optimization, and we do paid, um, paid advertising, we do search advertising, and we do mobile marketing. So, like we operate across um, the digital marketing spectra. Oh, it's it's um, digital marketing realm. Uh, this is not part of it, but it's it's something that a lot of people are now really interested in. And exactly. He has been on it for more than three years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Getting to the fourth year now. So that is that is a lot a lot of experience back in all this. So, um, can you like tell the audience some okay. of your achievements that you consider say remarkable in your career? Okay. So, as I said earlier on, I started Mundus Digital officially as a business in October last year. But before now, over the past three years, I've been actively involved in the digital marketing space. Um, I've worked for one of the biggest agencies in Nigeria. I've worked for some of um, the biggest brands in Nigeria. So, basically, I've worked as an employee for another agency and as a freelancer. So like before I started, one year before I started Mundus Digital, I, I was doing freelance. So it was just a work with as an individual doing businesses and helping businesses go on the internet. So officially, um, I structured my business in October last year. So for me, that could be like a milestone in my digital marketing career, especially for, for a, young, a young person of, of my age. So I think that, that for so far that has, that has been the biggest um, milestone. Um, you've worked as a freelance, you've worked now in your own company. <laughs> Those things are two different yeah, areas, yeah. Two, yeah. two broad, different spectrums. So which of these would you say is, was more challenging? Obviously, starting the business. Yeah. Starting the business in the best of the very best of. I knew that you were going to say so putting up a structure in place, getting a team of people to work with, getting clients, running up clients, going for one mission, all that too, it's been tough. But it's been challenging and it's been a wonderful experience for us. So um, I know you personally, and I know there was a time where your internship was a big thing, and it was a big deal, and it also translated to you having to write a book. Exactly. I want to ask, was it at that point you knew that you know, digital is the way? Was, was there any turning point for you where you were like, Digital is I know you are also an entrepreneur, you run other businesses, but when did you actually allow for and say, this is what I want to do? Okay, so um, before now, I've, I've started doing um, computing and web design blogging for a very long time. So I've been blogging for less than seven years. I started blogging in 2011. So it's been a very long, long time coming. So I've been, I've been very active on the internet. I've been doing lots of things and then how to design websites in my 100 level in university days. That was in 2012 precisely. So I've always been in this space. But officially, I got to understand what the term digital marketing means. And that was in my third level in yeah. school. So 2014, if I'm not mistaken. So I was, I was sitting down in my room. Um, and by the way, I studied information management technology in the university, IT. So I was sitting down in my room, I was saying, okay, after school, what? Area of IT, I going to specialize in. So, IT, while I was in school, then we were introduced to um, the, um, website development, um, software development, database management, and networking, and even of that stuff. So, I was like, okay, what area am I going to specialize in? I looked at my strengths. I'm very active on the internet, I understand how it works. I 
full definition of social the social media platforms from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to Snapchat. So I have seen how these platforms work and these tools work. And so I'm able to build a brand for myself over the years. So I felt okay, I think these are areas I want to get. So I did some research online and that was where I got to discover that there is a field, an evolving field called digital marketing that is helping businesses to move from the internet to grow businesses and drive sales. So I said, okay, I think this is exactly what I want to do. I know that the first idea was okay. Um, since I have six months of internship to do, yeah. I said, okay, I'm definitely going to intend in the digital marketing agency. Yeah. And so that's why I did the search, okay, who are the top, who are the biggest players in the industry, and fortunately, I went to find an So, uh, like today, credit, credit to Anna from there. <laughs> Just Anna from well, So, yeah. um, I think your turning point was somewhere in 2014. Yeah, exactly. According to what you said. Yeah. But, it's also like a trend in this thing. The people that are most successful actually are early adopters of exactly. these platforms. So exactly. I think from what you said, that is part of what also helped you. Exactly, yeah. Because you had been doing the internet, you know, on the internet, so you knew yeah. sort of what was coming. Yeah. And, and the truth is, okay, for example, I've, I've been blogging since 2011. Yeah. And if you're, if you're very serious with blogging, you should know yeah. SEO, you should understand search and optimization. So, I, I spent a little time to play around Google, how to run on Google, a very long time, even if I knew it was going to be a business, I was just going for my blog. So, I, I put up a blog post and I'm concerned about how my blog is going to, how the post is going to run on So, I did many of those things. Yeah. I did ads on Facebook, I did ads on Google, but I didn't really put all these things together up until 2015 when I said, okay, I think it's best time to do So, um, congratulations, you have a business, you have all the technical know how. What are some of the experiences, some of the lessons that you've learned running your business? So these things are very personal to you, sir. Okay, so um, first of all, one of the things I learned starting my business is that it's not enough to have the technical skills. It's not enough. So maybe you need business, starting a business and then you need about 40% of the technical skills. So there are other, other more important skills I need as a business person. And one of them is networking uh, skills. You need to meet people, you need to have to with people. You need to get to talk to people, let them buy your ideas and vision. So I noticed that um, it was an issue, and so I, I started consciously learning how to meet people, how to talk to people about what I do, and how to interact with people, and how to pitch my ideas and what my company can do to people. So networking skills very important, and then management skills. So fortunately enough, I, I studied information management technology, a meaning that will catch a few of maybe management courses. Why, why not? The opportunity is most of all in the school, yes. So, so from, from, from the way you talk, you talk like you have a lot of passion for this thing that you do. Exactly. I think passion really means that I was reading your LinkedIn profile, so you were actually passionate about business, business exactly. and then exactly. succeeding exactly. with digital. So, can you talk a little about the core passion? Okay, the thing is, um, unfortunately, we find ourselves in the country here. And then feel there's yes, little yeah. support for entrepreneurs. If you find like me, and like me, I'm struggling to find a place yeah. in society. And so I would say, I was thinking about, about three, three out of every five businesses, one last up to three years. Yeah. I think it's really a short statistic. So I felt that, this, especially businesses who are just coming up, especially in industries where we have big players. So it's very difficult for those businesses. We can't compete with these people because they have money, they can't spare. So I felt okay, the best place for these guys who are coming up, these small businesses, SMEs, to, to show their strengths to the social media and to the digital. So digital is a place that anybody, everybody can be in. So recently we saw an interesting um, ad about Sterling Bank. Yeah. So Sterling Bank is in no way uh, to be compared to the Sterling Bank and these guys. In terms of profit and stuff. Yeah. You can see a bank as no disrespect to Stelly Bank, you can see a bank as Stelly Bank. I mean, she she as, as a TV guy. So, yeah, I follow them and I ask them, well, why am I doing this guy? So, I'm actually not attached to them so much. So, I think, I think yeah. so, so, so that's a good deal. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. That's why I have so much fun. I want to see this business succeed. Yeah. So, I know you don't pay this so, for you. Yeah, about your social capital, also helping. So can you talk to the audience you know, about social capital, just very briefly, like what it can do for your own I think it's very important and also how it translates to your business. 
So as, as a new business, as a personal just started business, um, some of the clients have, have had a opportunity of working with people before. Um, over the past um, six weeks, I've been people who I have a wonderful relationship with. Them. And other people are people who were recommended and referred to by others. So as I said before, this working is key. Yeah. Um, it's good to, to let people know what you do. It's good to be able to. At times, there are people who I have not gone to level up before, free of charge, and that channel. People call me, I do lots of consultancy. And unfortunately, the first level is good, I do lots of free consultancy. So people call me, I don't know who speaks. I'm trying to set up the stats and stuff. So I just give them free consultancy. Yeah. And on social media, so I'm very lucky on social media, so I'm always running teams. Whatever I learn, I'm going to put in passion to so always teach people whatever I learn. So whatever I learn something new, I would also want to teach you. So, I think I do these things consistently and regularly. Who begin to see what we are? I think this guy is. That's a good thing. It's value, it's a game of value, sadly. It's a game of value. So, guys, it's, 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 it's really great that you're talking with you. This is the first step where we get to know about his personal life and your business. So, when we're going to come back, we're going to go straight to the business of the day opportunities for digital trainers. He has been in the trading industry for a little over three years now and he has a whole lot of stuff to tell us about that. So we'll be back. Hi guys, so welcome back to the episode where we're talking to Mr. Mundus here, um, the co-founder of Mundus Digital. So right now I'm going to be going into the segment where we talk about digital trainers and opportunities for that. Okay guys, so you would imagine the enormous amount of opportunity that exists in digital trading. A global estimate on record is about 43.6 billion that will be generated in revenues. I mean, so we see a lot of these um, companies or a lot of these small businesses, MSMEs, the SMEs, trying to learn these skills. I mean, it's going to increase as we go. So we see a huge number of them trying to learn the digital skills. Obviously, they have to be backed or taught by you know, digital trainers. So we see a lot of revenue potential in that area. We also see that around 78% of these guys are willing and ready to learn a new technology. And also, we have to consider the fact that Nigeria's internet penetration, as at now, is about 47%. That is almost half of the population of over 190 million people. So you can imagine the endless opportunities that exist in digital. So I'll switch it up to Mr. Martin to tell us a little about what he has been doing in that area. First of all, sort of like, what you've been doing that area of the past three years. So, I've been to I've been actively involved in training lots of people who are interested in digital marketing, and especially in the last, in the last three years, uh, I have had seminars uh, every now and then. It's a few years. I have had a training that I actually do like, digital marketing. Okay, so, currently, I'm a trainer with um, Facebook and um, partnership with Chinese Africa. So Facebook partner with Chinese Africa and to train 5,000 female entrepreneurs on the use of digital marketing to grow their business. So I'm, I'm a trainer and so I've been going around training female entrepreneurs on how to use digital marketing tools, especially Facebook tools, and to grow their businesses. So it's a very exciting field. Um, with the advent of, of digital marketing, the proliferation of um, smart devices and phones, and people are getting more interested So I want to ask, what if Ray is interested in this kind of thing, this sort of thing? And over time, we've discovered that most people are just millennials. Millennials. So, what about the operation of that, you know, portrait here? Okay, okay, okay. I think I think that the prosecution, right? And you have people who are looking at shaking others. You know, people who are willing to learn this. Oh, people who are willing to learn this. Business people do that. Like my, my mom, my mom, my mom who is is getting to her. Even it's, it's, she's always calling me to go to our jobs. So people, you can't survive today if you don't have digital skills. You can't survive in whatever you're trying to say. Since I'm a business man, what you know, you can't survive today. What is money and it's very big and doing the fast food too. And everybody, everybody today is looking at getting all of all of those digital skills. I know the owners of this platform, there's something they do. They, they, they make it possible that they know that these are like third world countries or second world countries. 
So they know that they, they, there are lots of, lots and lots of, lots of problems that might arise. And a lot of people that they make these products are not able to use it. So, for example, go to Facebook, they can do it again. Yeah. Oh, no. In fact, yesterday I just read that Google launched, I think, five, yeah. one station, yeah. five stations in Lagos. Yeah. And will launch more. Yeah. So, we can say there's a lot that this platform is actually doing. So, and yeah, in the area of training, so they do a lot of things. Yeah. So, how effective has something like this global training? Training digital course. How effective do you think it is? But me personally, I went out to pay some of the money to get the same, those kind of trainings. So, how effective is it? So, it's not like I think it's been really, really, very effective. I think it was a little bit also, I think, 2000, and that was the idea. And I discovered that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The cost of life is something that anyone who didn't get on it. I think the idea is that every business person should be able to do something on So, some of these smaller businesses don't have the other money that these big guys have to engage and engage in the service. So, as a small business owner, you should be able to create a single page for your, for your business. You should be able to have a page on Facebook or Twitter. You should be able to know how to create this business. You should be able to know how uh, to list your business and Google, Google business business. So we know the and it's, it's free of charge. So yeah, you don't get to be to to make it. Well that's the thing. So it's free of charge, but we don't still find everybody trying to take all these courses. The thing is that they have a habit and they're trying to I mean if I'm not mistaken, they're trying to, to get at least a million people. But I think they have a package, and I think they are getting close to that. Lots of people, lots of young people, so a million people. Now we have 490 million people. That's that's just a long way to go. So that's part of the problem. Okay, so we've talked about how to train people, 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 how to so people are concerned about it. And that course has a lot of tools. So we so have to have a lot of tools. So we need each data to subscribe and we need to go to And I think it's also, it might be an issue. And I think that's why this video is going to come up with a new station and a few few by five at a time. So I think those guys are doing it. Well, I think we know data is an issue. So we have to get out So um, we've seen the platforms trying to do here. And you argue that it's very effective. Yeah. So yeah. So we also have the independent trader. Sure. How? What, what would you say has been the contribution of those independent traders? I mean, there must be something that I offer that makes it expensive, so to say. So, so what would you say is that extra thing that they are adding, or what makes it different? So, okay. So, so for example, Facebook just uh, go through Facebook groups. So Facebook people to just teach how to have to the Facebook page, how to engage to the contents, how to have the ads and so it's just very easy to generate for people who want these guys who are really into this field and not done this for years, they want to give you certain information that you might not get anywhere. So I think I do Facebook ads and I found a system of how you need a box for me. That that that's that for me. And so I'm not going to give you that for free. Exactly. I'm just teaching how to run ads on Facebook. So if you want to learn how to how to run ads that actually come fast, then come up with a master class and we'll then pay you for that. Or or all we say is the average uh, sort of the average amount that we speak that for cost. And what we say is sort of the similar with the format because I for one I know that it, I mean it was just recently I knew that okay someone that calls himself a digital marketer you have to have email all around so you can know how to make up companies that can sell and all of that. So all you say is the cost content and the average price of the So if you look at digital marketing generally, because what we just said that 
Lübeck, die ich zu machen zum General, ich habe schon wieder mal schon wieder aus der Hand. Ich sage schon, das ist zu much, das ist zu viel. Ich sage schon, 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 das ist zu viel. But generally, we don't have to do chronic things like leadership style. So, um, I want to, I want to get our host to industry that's, I think, same industry, but it's still related to digital technologies. So, we see companies like Mandela, uh, Sissy Bob. I mean, just recently, <laughs> the idea had uh, Mandela now as a branch, and I think we wonder. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, we see, yeah, we see those kind of growth and we, and we know where these guys are coming from. So the growth trajectory and the, I mean, everything is excellent. So I want to ask, why are we not seeing similar strides in um, digital marketing? Okay, so I mentioned to you before that we need to be sure that we use the digital marketing. Yeah, it's one of the things that we do. We have designers, we have developers, we have content developers, we have SEO. We pay that to search, we do mobile marketing. So, we do a lot of things. So, digital marketing is a very broad field. So, if Adela is showing people in web design, web development, and software development, it's also a subset of digital marketing. So, not everybody is going to be digital marketing. We just have people who are just good in SEO. So, there are people who are just SEO nodes. So, they just want to specialize in that area. Some of them actually have advice. So, I tell people, if you look at that box as a moving to this industry, look for a particular niche and specialize. So if I'm like doing something fantastic in the area of the web development and software development, I it's also a good thing. And it adds generally to the entire digital marketing system. So are you advising people to keep the pocket of it and actually stand in mass and stand? So I'm also getting now that who said it is you want all of yeah, them. Yes, exactly. Because you still think you made it because they don't have to do social media for themselves. It's just not because I will really chat about it. I will really chat. I think it's more than people who are That's true. So I tell people it's very wrong. It doesn't mean if you limit yourself to one area, then you're not going to make as much money as one other guys against you. So as a digital marketing agency, and I claim when I I say I offer full service. That certain services that get, especially in the areas of maybe media, that are not really a poor media company, I want to engage in the services of people who are doing streaming media services, like Disney media, because they are using video after their videos and stuff. So, yeah. have contents that needs video, I just give it to you to make it understand. So, it's cool. I tell people, if possible, specialize, find a niche and then make yourself the king, the king of that niche, the queen of that niche. So, we have these big guys. The big figures. Even if they don't even offer full service and service. And a lot of people are, they kind of, they don't understand what goes on. Yeah. They actually go and work there. Yeah. And see yeah. that it's not entirely full service. I mean, the whole digital marketing spectrum is so, 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 so much. So, from what you are saying, specializing. So, if you are also a tra trainer, you should also. Yeah, exactly. So, if you're a trainer, you have to have a kind of business. Facebook badass. So it tells you, you know, speech to other people that from the scores from their competence to Facebook ads. So it tells you that you do ads and you can bet you can bet his life that those ads for that. So if I have issues with Facebook advertising, there's only one person that comes to my mind, and that's Kevin. So that's free, free, free ads. Free, free, free information and information to me. I want to also ask, what are some of the opportunities? So okay, I'm not a big spender, I don't have a lot of money, but I know the skills. What are some of the opportunities that exist? How can I market myself and how can I actually get money for teaching these skills? Teaching these skills. Okay, so I'm going to talk a couple of advice, and especially to the people who are just people are just starting out. Um, first of all, is that our advice is to join communities. So the communities are very good, they are very huge. And especially in the past two years. I think Facebook has the amounts that the mission of Facebook is going to change from um, connecting with the world to building stronger communities. So before that was most of the world. What happens when everybody is connected? 
So we need to start building and strengthening communities. And these communities are groups. So you go to Facebook, they are really huge, popular with commercial groups on Facebook. I talk about the particular niche. So what you do is, if you find yourself in a particular niche, or you're looking at growing or advancing your skill and carrying a particular niche, you go to Facebook, search for those groups. I'm sure there are groups on content improvement, there are groups on SEO, there are groups on digital marketing, there are groups on social media. Get join those groups and be active. What that happens is only share what you have. So share the knowledge that I have and provide a value and a reform I get both clients and deals and contracts and stuff. So whatever it is, whatever it is you get, go to these platforms and then share what it is that you get. And um, fortunately, this most of these things can be done free of charge okay. online. So go to um, Google, take up Google courses. Wikipedia, Demi, Coursera, think of these courses as well as apply as much knowledge as possible. And then don't share with people. It's probably a people who look at you as a dot that was my job. What is that? I think I think you just dropped the gem of information here. So Facebook was initially trying to connect with more and now they said we build communities. I actually have a first time experience from someone that would uh, be part of a large growing community owned by Intro video. Yeah, that's what we Yeah, that's what we So he talked about that. Like, what's this thing about that? And he said, that's where every young person should be. Exactly. Yeah, he said that, but I didn't really understand it. I think it makes more sense now. So there is dependent. Join communities. I think if you are interested in any of those skills that are related to digital marketing, join those communities. So, guys, this is our main segment on opportunities in digital training. I hope you've been enlightened. Um, the last segment will actually be on the SME, so what can the SMEs do to improve their business? We have Monish here, and uh, he's some, someone with all of SME business strategies for digital. So we're going to be right back. So, guys, welcome to this segment. We're going to be talking about SMEs and businesses that need digital transformation. Of course, for every business, some way, somehow, you need to somehow attach yourself to go digital as well. So we're going to be talking about some of the challenges, some of the opportunities, some of the things for businesses can do to help yourself. So um, we know you don't have all of the budgets, I mean, to pay some agencies and some marketers, but there are still some things that you can be doing by your own self that can help you. So I'm going to be talking to Mundus now on some of those things. I want you to tell me what are some of the things that these small businesses can actually do to get in the game. Okay, so um, first of all, um, like I said earlier in the last, in the last session, yeah. um, you need to let people know what you do, what you do. And um, the best way to do that is to tell students. To tell students about what you do, tell students about how you do what you do. And uh, tell students about the one that stops the one before, no matter how small it is, what you want to do, clients. Let's say you're in the media industry. Yeah. So you talk about some experiences, and you need to figure out what you do. You just want to listen to your students, to your students. To your so the more you do this, the more you want to be conscious of it, especially on social media. Social media is free, so there's no need to see what you do on social media. So you can, you can start out, I understand you have projects to know that, there are things you do. But just start with what you have, your friends on social media, let them still be seen. Can I know people who just who start with shoes free projects, but they just let them still be seen on social media, and you will get more and more popular. I think yeah, um, some, something I noticed with businesses, these ones are not necessarily SMEs. Yeah. So when they've gone from that SME stage to a growing potential, yeah. they start to do something. They now take storytelling to another yes. level. Exactly. So they take storytelling to the point where they start running ads. Exactly. For storytelling, what you want them is genuine storytelling. And you have to just somehow just know what they're doing to preach that. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> Those guys are the class of people in the university. When you go to that place, you understand that you agree to what you do. So, they don't just tell you to come out. They don't tell you to come out. No! No marketing! So, they just tell you to come out. No marketing. So, it's great. You call the client. You know what you are doing. So, that is key. And those guys don't spend the time. You can decide not to spend the time. When you tell you stories that people, people engage and you tell them that, you're growing your, your followership and your, your, your fans. I think, I think it's because of the Behavior audience that we have now. A lot of these people want to connect with something. They don't want to see a logo and just, you know, no, no, no person attached to it. So 
so now I see the form you mentioned and I'm like, whoa, this guy has a story. Yeah. So I'm used to whatever it is they are doing. They never had to market, so I know if I want to do if I want to do something very well to have that guys. It's just guys. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's really, really important. So I want to be really talking about some of the uh, things this small businesses So yeah, so um, I'm a small business owner for example, and maybe I don't have some of this fancy, I don't have enough money to spend on that and all that. What are some of the those are some of the challenges that I face that I know you you can you can address to that. So I want you to talk about some of these challenges and maybe how you think you can overcome. So, if you do business, and that means also for all these of us, it's very limited projects. So, you can have all the money you need to do advertising, you can have all the money you need for marketing. So, you always, always have the limited projects to work with. And so, uh, first of all, one of the things my, my mentor, Akin, Akin Adam, has, has done with the business training for some of his titles is that don't start the business first, yeah. and then start looking for the market. So first of all, you need to be sure that the market is right for what you're doing. Or for the kind of business you want to start, for you're not going to do business. But that's one mistake most people do. I should be able what is more bigger guys are doing. So you can see bigger guys and feel like they're doing something new. And you want to delve into that certain knowledge, even without trying to understand the market and the selling of the business. I've seen that so many times. People just have business time. One day to lose, the business has started. So you need to understand, let's, let's be a business that you know people are willing and ready to patronize. That's very key, that's very, very important. And then secondly, um, another advice that I'm going to give for the small business owners is um, we, can't, we can't compete with big guys. It's very easy to compete with big guys. Because they are smart, they will they will they will deal with serious business. So you can't compete with them. So most times what I advise you to do, especially if you have a big competitor, you have a bigger competitor. So what you want to do is keep all those guys away and move forward. Just a subset of what they are doing and do it very, very well. You'll be surprised that those bigger guys will not start going back to talk to you for those, for those services. Yeah, that's so just look at what this guy is doing. So I want to go down and say, okay, I'm this is the other thing I do. I want to doing very well. I think that also the animation, I think that was not just for animation and they're very creative. You know this time that this bigger guys, this in India, so that's how I'm going to say, okay, we have a client on this animation, so I just need to suggest as well. So you understand, so first of all, special ads, special ads, very, very important. The small items, and to get that, and the more opportunities and that. I think what that is a really, really defining approach of your really Point narrowing it down, specialized and all of those things. Like you said, right now, we cannot compete with the big guys. I don't see myself competing with maybe the likes of <coughs> Troika, for example. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, now, uh, when I listen to Mr. Bjorn Schumann, you know, the other day, he, 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 he brought to our mind that things you do, them as a company, yeah. I don't get it strong. Specific things, yeah. maybe, right? So, I think that's the more reason why you should focus on your storytelling and all of these things. So, I think, yeah. I, I think that the fact that it's uh, not, not because it's one business, you know, you have to be to play around, you can experiment, experiment, try things. Yeah. So, um, the real marketing is like right? you keep it from that. So, just do crazy stuff, just do, do crazy stuff, play around the business. You understand, there are young people. Our uh, audience are basically millennials, so just play around with this stuff that you'd be surprised that kind of huge that they are doing something that. So don't be scared of, don't be scared to experience the moment. Okay, okay. 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 And, uh, this thing you said now, uh, I just got something. So, um, some people say, ah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the social media type. I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not that. And your business is something. You can't, so, you can't, you can't take that. What, what would you, what would you advise? SME owners, um, small business owners, uh, on you know, coming out there to actually talk about it. What would you, what, would, what is the kind of advice you would give to them that would push them out of their own? And the truth is that a small business owner can't support itself in business. 
So, as a business grows to a point where you just need to be there to pay support. Yeah, well, as a small business owner, people want to know who is the guy behind yeah, the physical owner, who is the founder, what are the accessibility, what are the skill sets, what can they do? So, people need to know that as a owner of those things that have the competency, have the skills, even though you might not be the one doing the actual work, they want to see because you are the owner of this company, you want to be sure that I can do this thing. So, you can't say, I'm not, I'm not a social media person. And you want to try and this is fast <laughs> and uh, fast moving uh, environment. So you have to call it. I tell you, I don't know how to do this. So the first answer is so this is a social media. Are you acting on social media? So you tell me you're using passion. Like what's your page on Instagram? I'm not seeing you. So you need to be face of the business. At least as a growing like, small business that's still here, you need to be face of the business. So you can't take that away. I mean, it's a good we can't also uh, overlook the fact that some people actually take, take it to the next level and then they do guerrilla marketing and do stunts that uh, might, you know, not be so, 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 so good sometimes. So, what do you have to say about people, you know, knowing when to obtain some of those things? Yeah, yeah, I think that's also very key, which then uh, obtain is to be to the So, you don't go back to but I would suggest it's even better you can do than you don't do at all. Okay. So what that uh, spending that is there yeah, is very smart, like that was awesome. People need to get up for time. I'm sure lots and lots of people they gain lots of videos. I'm sure so many people who may have been in the and have all those products actually be. So they now have an opportunity of there's not a wider pool of people they can talk to that talks about the product. So I think it's better to try it. I'm not so because I learned. That's, That's very, very true. So I think another thing with SMEs is that they feel, you know, uh, why small business, maybe we do a certain type of business. I mean, Instagram is very, very, very good with things that have to do with media. So can you, can you sort of say a thing or two about this need for, you know, like business in the norms for social media? I believe in the future, every company is going to have a media department. That's why I think it's wrong. Right now, we're already seeing those kind of steps being in the city. I mean, you see banks having a TV channel or having a so are really doing so well. So, it might not necessarily combat in terms of customer that are Can you sort of say a thing or two about the fact that, you know, some people say my business is not social media? So, I don't think there's any business. So if you have a business owner, you see a business is not a social media, you can do a better business. Because you do, you're losing us on the larger part of the potential of the potential clients. Yeah. So that's that's very important. Every business, yeah, because these are people. Social media is not, it's not made up of the machines. Yeah, yeah, people are great. People are great. People are great. They have passions and emotions and needs. You see the so, song, you see people, the CEOs that have cameras. Yeah. Now they don't use their yeah. phone. They want to know what people are saying. They want to know, actually, they want to say your business is not a social media giant. So, um, still on our digital trainers and the rise, most of the supply and demand at this point, I would say, I don't know the percent people, but I think, I sort of think that maybe the demand has raised the supply at this time. So, what, would there be a time where, you know, we are looking at the future, the near future, where the supply will now be greater than the demand? Do you see that? I, I don't know if that will ever happen. I will explain why. So, this uh, social media platform is constantly growing. Yeah. So, that's why I saw this application to get drop last time. Uh, so, what you do to that about Facebook? Yeah. My next thing is to retire the So, the way Facebook, you have the process of things and stuff, constantly changes. Are those things intentional, sorry? Um, they are not. Okay, like okay, a few years ago, before, I think it was really cool. You can do ads on Facebook and the other ones, all of those social media ads, especially for the screen ads. So, what happened with US last year? This is not the same thing. You're going to run into the school ads, and they're going to, it's going to be made known. So, whoever is in the ad, it's going to know who's behind the ad. Who, in terms of the company, for yes. example, yes. 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 No, the company, the company is behind the ad. Okay. So, yesterday you did an ad against the brand. So, you can't just do that as a business, just go and put it on one page and then run ads. If you do it, it's a problem. You can do it. 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 You can do it.
Things are constantly changing. And what it means is as these technologies are changing, you also need to be able to learn. So that people always position themselves. So I can say, that there's a new platform or there's a new technology, I always want to learn and understand that platform. So that I'll be in a better position to know how to teach each others. So there are things that are always going to be changing. New platforms, three years ago, four years ago, that was smarter than well. so yeah, yeah. today's standard is big. Two years ago, I was like the stories, Facebook stories, and so I said, I'm going to go to the stories. This is a constant. What it means that as long as these new platforms are coming up, and these technologies, there will always be a lot of people to train others and also do some of these platforms. So it's as the demand is going and the supply, as the supply is going to the demand. Yeah. I think that was why you, we also have a lot of the need for specialization. So if, exactly. if your mind is in this is your special, you know exactly. it's not exactly. about it. Yeah. So that you heard it, that there is no stopping to what you can learn in this platforms. I will have a picture of the former Instagram when you know it. I saw it on social media, some of these are, and a new one to it. And the current one, so you can see what it is. So yeah. yeah so on, on this show, we have two new advocates for this entire time. Okay? And uh, we know that all of these things are good, they are good for business, they are good for marketing. But well, let's also forget that there are people behind the devices that their time is doing something to do all these beautiful things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you to you know, say something to the audience about you know having to also you know get out of that <laughs> social media sometimes and you know, go out and do real life stuff. So, so I, I always advocate for the responsiveness of social media. We have to respect people's feelings, we have to respect people's opinion. To respect people's religion, so uh, let us assume that because social media is faceless, yeah. so we have to understand that like, people with emotions, people with impacts and dysfunctions, and likes and dislikes are behind uh, you know, social media. So we have to respect that as well. And then another thing that uh, I also want to talk about is uh, Yali. Yali has a long capital initiative. We are running the campaign now called Yali Chiefs. Yan Chiefs, hashtag Yan Chiefs. The basic thing that we're waiting for is that for every information we share on the internet, we have to stop, we have to reflect on this, we have to verify what we share. Because one of the biggest issues we have on social media is fake news. Fake news. So, and the conscious of the limitation that happens now is that every, anything that I see on the internet is false. That is true. We don't know that. And that's, I have to add to that. There are lots of things people share on the internet that people don't see behind their laptop and the things that they keep stories. And they tell you how, how something came to this and how it exports. <laughs> so most of those things are just fabricated. <laughs> most of those things people just think, people, people just form WhatsApp conversations. Yes, being sure to do that. And it's being sure to do that. So people need to learn that not everything is going to be that is true. Not pay for information on the internet is true. You need to pay for it's your responsibility to make sure that every information on the internet is true. Like before you share the information on the internet, guys, 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 guys. So, guys, you can advocate for a safer internet. You should also consider the person that is behind this phone when you are sending out your abusive tweets and all of that. So, guys, I think it's been a very good sort of session with the good news. We're going to be back with two more sessions, which is the trivia and the sports. So, guys, see you later.